Hello everyone, I welcome you all to Physics Fala and in this session we are going to discuss the next portion related to the very interesting chapter of physical chemistry which is mole concepts. If I talk about the previous session, I hope the previous session is clear to everyone. First of all, just let me know. I hope I am audible as well as visible to everyone. Now, basically, uh, in the previous part of this particular uh, chapter, we were discussing about the basics related to mole concepts. In that case, I told you about the entire conceptualization about accuracy, precision, uh, dimensional analysis as well as SI units and much more things. If I talk about the basic idea about the scientific notation as well as significant figures, we all know how to deal with the mathematical operations, we all know. I also gave you certain questions as a homework. I hope you guys are doing your homework regularly. Now basically in this session, the main focus will be on certain uh, important concepts. First of all, we are going to talk about the atomic mass unit. Definitely, we discussed about the basics of that particular part. Now, it's time to uh, discuss more elaborately about the calculation of atomic mass unit. Then, we are going to discuss about the next part, which is the calculation of mole. So, basically, this uh, particular lecture, lecture number two, is going to be very, very interesting. Uh, we have lots of questions related to the calculation of mole and those who are very confused uh, in the calculation of mole, uh, those who don't know how to deal with the questions of mole, how can we identify like which formula we are going to use, this lecture is basically for you. So basically this lecture is dedicated for all class 11th students uh, as well as all those students who are preparing for any type of examination but they are confused in the mole concept also. Okay. Next part in this case we are going to discuss about the percentage combination uh, composition and empirical formula and molecular formula and if a time permits definitely we are going to discuss about certain laws of chemical combinations. So basically we have certain laws, law of conservation of mass, law of a definite proportion, law of multiple proportion, law of residue reciprocal proportion that part also we are going to discuss in this particular session okay now uh, if you guys have any doubt just let me know in the comment box okay now talking about the first part we were discussing about the atomic mass unit why there is a need to actually derive another type of unit because we already have certain units for mass or weight uh, measurement in that case we know that that particular unit is basically your kilogram or grams but i told you whenever you are moving from my macroscopic object to a very microscopic one basically you are talking about the atom so you cannot see atom uh, uh, from your naked eyes because it's actually very very small if i talk about the dimension dimensions are in the range of nanometer or angstrom so you know this particular part is very very small first of all i will not be able to actually isolate one atom and put it on the weighing uh, weighing machine uh, in that case, the, the weight is not going to be measured because it's already very, very small. So, we have to derive another unit uh, which actually deals with the calculation up to atomic scale only. And in that case, we have the unit which is atomic mass unit. But every type of weight measurement actually requires a particular uh, weight measuring machine. In that case, I need to first of all take something as a reference. Uh, if I talk about a very simple demonstration in that case. So, first of all, this atomic mass unit uh, works in the atomic scale. First of all, this works in the atomic scale. So, whenever you are reading anything, first thing which you should know is the cause. Why we need the atomic mass unit. You know now that uh, for, for the uh, atomic scale, which is actually very, very small, we need to derive another quantity, uh, which gives us the result in terms of their atomic weight. So that's why we have derived the unit, which is known as atomic mass unit, or it is also known as a unified mass. But uh, let's, let's uh, talk about a very simple application. Uh, you all must have seen fruit vendors or sabji walas in, in your colony or in your uh, society, whatever it is. And you know like uh, they, they have something like a weighing machine, uh, on one side they put some, some uh, weights, uh, 500 gram, 1 kilogram, 2.5 kilogram and on another side they put some vegetables or some oranges, apples, whatever you are purchasing. And when these, these two uh, uh, things, first one is the weighing balance, the uh, weights, 500 gram, 1 kilogram, 2.5 kilogram, uh, they actually balance with the same uh, uh, amount or same weight of the uh, 
fruits or vegetables you can say that we have the equal quantity so in that case the reference is basically the weights you are using and the next part which you are considering is basically your apples vegetables you don't know the actual weight of one apple or one vegetable but cumulatively you can say that this uh, four uh, apples or let's say four bananas or uh, let's say four uh, lockies <laughs> basically they are actually equals to the weight of one kilogram uh, watt so in that case you can say that the weight of this particular uh, item whatever i'm purchasing is actually equals to one kilogram so you need a reference to actually weigh the weight of uh, any type of species whatever it is either uh, these are apples oranges um, your any any seasonal fruit whatever it is you know you need a reference which is basically 500 grams uh, uh, what or you can say the the butt which is equals to 1 kilogram 2.5 kilogram so just like that for the calculation of this wet measurement in terms of atom atomic scale we need a reference so whenever we talk about this atomic mass unit we always starts with a particular reference i need to choose i need to uh, calibrate my system in such a way that uh, every type of weight is going to be accurate now in that case initially they thought that uh, we can take the fundamental particle which is hydrogen itself and uh, uh, they calibrated hydrogen weight as a one one u one amu let's say but after the calculation of a different type of species different type of atoms they found out there is some error when we are using hydrogen as a reference so they switched to another species in that case the next species was again oxygen but after the calculation they found out again certain um, uh, atomic weights are not accurate so again that reference uh, was not working so they chose to a next reference which is the most important reference which is very easily available i can say so in that case the reference was carbon 12 isotope and you know the meaning of isotope isotopes are basically the species having uh, same atomic number but different mass number so in that case carbon has uh, three main isotopes carbon uh, 12 13 and 14 carbon 12 is the most common one which is easily available its percentage abundance is very high and it's very easy to find out carbon carbon uh, because you know carbon is uh, very easily available so they thought like we can select carbon 12 as the reference value and the meaning of carbon 12 is definitely its weight is going to be exactly 12 amu and after taking the reference uh, as carbon 12 they found out every weight is actually going to be very very accurate it comes out uh, uh, a very accurate value so the reference was done then the next part is the calculation so how can you define one amu when you are using carbon 12 isotope so in that case the meaning of this one amu term is a very very easy it simply says that one atomic mass unit is basically if i am taking carbon 12 weight as 12 amu and if i am dividing this entire part with 12 so i can say that will be one amu that is the definition one atomic mass unit is basically one twelfth of the mass of an atom of a carbon 12 isotope and this particular part is your reference this particular part is your reference i hope this entire part is clear to everyone so we have to select a reference now uh, if you talk about the uh, value in that case you can say sir you are taking a relative value with respect to carbon so yes we have another term for that particular part which is the relative atomic mass so when i'm taking when when the definition of this amu was not defined then we were uh, talking about the weight reference with respect to carbon 12 isotope so that term was relative atomic mass so in that case the relative atomic mass is mass with respect to carbon 12 so let's say i'm i'm talking about uh, any of these species you can you can select any species uh, let's say i'm i'm talking about hydrogen or let's say i'm talking about oxygen or let's say i'm talking about potassium let's say i'm talking about calcium whatever it is let's say the mass of <coughs> an species uh, is let's say 36 i don't know the mass of that species but if i'm putting one atom of that particular species which is having 36 u mass or 36 amu mass i can say i need three carbon 12 isotope atoms to actually balance that this weighing machine so in that case you can say that this particular mass which is 36 comes out as the reference with respect to carbon 12 isotope so you can say yes definitely that is relative atomic mass but again we need to define a particular unit because we need uniformity 
so for that case this atomic mass unit was a derived and it simply said that it's nothing it's nothing fancy it's very easy that 1 12th of the mass of one carbon 12 isotope atom is basically 1 amu and uh, it is also known as a unified mass so you can use this uh, u part or amu whatever it is okay now this particular u has a basic um, um, relation with grams because generally in chemistry we are going to use the grams very often if i'm using the grams i need to know what is the relation between amu as well as u so that part comes from the mole calculation in this particular section i'm just giving you the simple trick to analyze this particular part but in the mole calculation i will uh, tell you more elaborately about this particular calculation because we know that one mole of carbon 12 isotope uh, has mass equals to 12 gram one mole we, means we have 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 atoms of a carbon 12 isotope so if uh, um, these many atoms have this much amount of weight so one atom will be having the weight which is 12 divided by 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 if that is the situation then we can put the entire value in one amu section because from that particular part i can say that one mole of carbon 12 isotope atoms having weight which is 12 gram okay one mole means we have a 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 atoms of carbon 12 isotope are having weight which is a 12 grams because i am correlating gram with amu so from that part you can say that one atom of carbon 12 isotope will weigh exactly equals to 12 divided by 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 grams now you know the weight of one atom of a carbon 12 isotope in terms of grams just look at the definition so from that part if i am putting this particular value you can say that one amu will be one twelfth the mass of one carbon atom which is 12 divided by 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 so if you look at this value this will be 1 upon 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 grams i hope this entire part is clear to everyone so that is the basic relation those who don't know anything about this entire calculation don't worry uh, in the mole concept part definitely we are going to discuss more elaborately about the entire calculations okay so i hope the first part related to amu is clear you can correlate amu or u with grams also okay next part in that case if i talk about the atomic mass any type of atom uh, so its atomic mass is very clear definitely this atomic mass is going to be expressed in terms of amu or u unified mass or atomic mass unit uh, if i talk about the definition definition is very clear it is the mass of one atom of substance and it is expressed in amu so in that case if i talk about the mass of atomic mass of hydrogen i can say that will be equal to 1u i am using the approximate value but the actual value is 1.0008 okay next part is for uh, helium i can say that will be 4u for lithium let's say that will be 7u for um, your beryllium let's say that will be 9u so you need to remember certain values uh, if you not uh, if you are not able to remember all those things i'm suggesting you to remember only 20 elements okay only first 20 elements as well as their uh, atomic mass if you are capable of doing up to 30 then it's more than enough but uh, if you are not able to understand or if you are not able to recognize or remember each and everything i suggest you first 20 elements are compulsory there is there is um, i can say there is no other way but in 21 to 30 elements you can remember the mass of manganese uh, iron cobalt nickel copper and zinc okay so these are the most important elements so you have to remember their uh, atomic mass okay so these are the atomic masses if i talk about the next part you can say we have boron let's say it's uh, 11u although it's not 11u it's basically 10.8u okay 
now if i talk about the next part which is carbon we know it is exactly 12u let's say for nitrogen it is 14u if i talk about uh, the next part which is your oxygen let's say it's 16u uh, for uh, uh, fluorine it's uh, 19u and for neon it is basically 20u if i talk about further more about the uh, next part you can say we have a sodium 23u uh, then we have magnesium 24 aluminium 27 silicon 28 uh, phosphorus 31 sulfur 32 chlorine 35.5 i'll to, uh, I, i'll tell you why it is 35.5 in fraction uh, in in case of uh, potassium it is uh, uh, sorry argon it is 40 potassium it is 39 and for calcium it is again 40 okay so that's the entire idea about the uh, atomic mass so what's the difference between atomic mass and molecular mass again i can talk about the molecular mass the unit is going to remain same whenever i am expressing the mass of one molecule definitely that mass will be molecular mass and i am expressing that entire part in amu or unified mass okay it is obtained by multiplying the atomic masses of each element by uh, number of its atoms and adding them all together for example if i tell you tell me the atomic uh, molecular mass of h2so4 what will be the molecular mass of h2so4 you can say sir we have a two hydrogens having mass one plus we have a sulfur having mass 32 plus we have a four oxygens having mass 16 so you can say that will be 64 uh, 66 96 and 98 you can say that will be sir 98 u definitely correct correct no issues let's say i'm talking about h3 po4 phosphoric acid in that case how can you say sir we have a three hydrogens having mass one okay then we have one phosphorus having mass 31 then we have a four oxygens having mass 16 so then 64 65 95 98 again 98 u very good that will be 98 u in the same way let's say i am talking about the molecular mass of uh, c6 h12 o6 <clears throat> which is your glucose in that case you can say sir we have a six carbons having mass 12 then we have a 12 hydrogens having mass 1 then we have a six oxygens having mass 16 so in that case that will be 144 46 56 uh, i guess uh, that will be 180 okay yes that will be 180 u okay so that's how you can calculate the molecular masses if somebody is asking about the calculation of molecular masses in terms of uh, amu or in terms of u i hope this entire part is clear the calculation is a very straightforward okay nothing fancy here now talking about the next part this is the most important portion so uh, we know about the fundamental quantities and from that fundamental quantities we can say one quantity is very interesting which is the amount of substance and generally in chemistry we are going to deal with enormous calculations um different type of chemicals different type of species but the one thing which is the most important part is basically the amount of substance because i have to take certain amount of that particular substance to actually start the reaction whatever it is i can uh, select two reagents i can select uh, three different reactants and mix them together to start a particular reaction and to form a particular product in that case i need the amount of substance that is the fundamental quantity and for that part we have a specific unit which is known as mole so that corresponds to the amount of substance so just like any other quantity it is basically the representation of another term related to quantity so if i talk about the mole so mole definition is a very very easy to understand a mole is defined as the amount of substance so first thing in that case it is basically the amount of substance it is basically the amount of substance that contains as many atoms molecules ions electrons protons neutrons whatever it is so i am again comparing i am again taking a reference in that case and reference you all know reference is nothing but we have carbon 12 isotope so in that case it contains as many atoms molecules ions or any other entities as there are carbon atoms in exactly 12 gram of carbon 12 isotope it may may be uh, like confusing to some of you but uh, trust me this this calculation of mole is very easy to understand so that is the definition part now talking about a more simpler version i can say we have different quantities in mathematics also 
so for example if i have a 12 pens or 12 pencils that 12 number actually represent a specific thing which is a dozen in the same way if i talk about two uh, gloves or i can say two pencils i am talking about a pair so in that case this uh, two gloves number two basically represent a pair uh, quantity in 12 is basically representing a dozen in the same way quantity in terms of 144 numbers so 144 pencils 144 uh, um, uh, your uh, pants whatever it is in that case that will be your gross in the same way if i'm talking about 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power multiplied by sorry multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 of any number like it can be atom, it can be a molecule, it can be uh, your pants, it can be number of rupees. You can say that number actually represent one mole. So you can simply say from that part that one mole of any species is actually equals to 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23. Okay. <coughs> Numbers of atoms you can say molecules or any other entities okay i hope this entire part is clear so we know about the basic idea now this particular number has a quite significance first of all this number is represented by na this number is represented by Na, which is actually known as Avogadro's number. Okay, this number is actually known as Avogadro's number. I hope this part, this first part related to the basics of mole is clear to everyone. Okay, now talking about the next part, we know that number of carbon atoms in 12 gram of carbon is actually known as Avogadro's number. I already told you that this particular part is known as Avogadro's number. I hope this part is clear. So, you know that one mole of substance is basically nothing but equals to 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 chemical units of that particular substance. As simple as that. Now, my question is a very, very easy. My question is very easy. You can see this number, you can say, yeah, scientific notation is there. But my question is, more simpler than this, this particular part can you tell me how large this number is because you need to understand the significance it's not a very small number it's not a very small number so my question is very easy uh, can you tell me how large this number is take a pause try to pause this video just think about it uh, in your own terms like how large you think this number is okay uh, most of you are thinking yeah it's a very large number sir it's a very very large number uh, but no one knows about the significance of this particular number. Let me tell you with the help of a very simple example. Let's let's pick any of you or let's pick me. Okay, I am the lucky one here. Let's say I have this much amount of money. Okay, so basically by anyhow, Arpit sir is having 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 rupees. Okay, let's say, let's say, let's say, I have this much amount of money with me. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very lucky because I have this much amount of money. Let's say, let's say, let's say that I am spending uh, 10 raised to the power 8 or I can say, uh, yes, 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 10 raised to the power 8 rupees, which is 1 crore approximately um, you can take 1 crore or 10 crore whatever you want okay so i am i am spending this much amount of money per second okay i am spending this much amount of money per second because i have lots of money i have this much amount of money which is equals to avogadro's number and i am spending uh, 1 crore rupees per second okay so my question is very easy how much time it will require to spend entire money 
वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन सो आई एम स्पेंडिंग वन करोड़ रुपीज पर सेकेंड आई एम जस्ट आस्किंग यू हाउ मच टाइम विल इट टेक मी to spend the entire amount which is 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 rupees uh, most of you are thinking yes sir it, it will take um, 10 raised to the power 10 seconds or it will take some some very nominal amount okay so take a pause try to solve this particular part because it's a very interesting um, analogy i am using because uh, money you know like whenever it comes to money and spending of money everyone is like oh this much money i am very lucky so that's why i'm i'm using this simple analogy that i have this much amount of money and i'm spending 1 crore rupees per second okay or let's say 10 raised to the power 8 rupees per second and i'm asking you how much time uh, it will take or it will require to spend my entire money although i don't have this much amount of money it may be 6.022 only but uh, not that much okay so uh, in that case uh, let me tell you a very simple thing so uh, in one second i am spending 10 raised to the power 8 rupees okay in one minute that amount will be 60 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 8 rupees okay in one hour that will be 60 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 8 rupees okay uh, in one day <coughs> that will be 24 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 8 rupees i guess approximately so that will be 24 multiplied by 36 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 0010 yeah that will be 10 raised to the power 10 rupees that is the amount i am spending in one day okay now coming back to the calculation i can say in one month in one month i can say let's say the month is 30 days only so that will be 30 multiplied by 24 multiplied by 36 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 10 or i can say that will be 3 multiplied by 24 multiplied by 36 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 11 rupees this i am spending in one month this i am spending in one month or i can say in one year in one year i can say we have uh, or or there is no need to include month Uh, you can directly say in a one year you have 365 days so that will be 365 multiplied by 24 multiplied by 36 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 10 rupees this is the amount i am spending in one year so this amount i am spending in one year the total amount will be spending in how much years so i can say total years are very easy to calculate total amount which is 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 divided by amount spending in one year which is 365 multiplied by 24 multiplied by 36 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 10 uh, let's try to decode this entire part you can say that will be 6 636 uh then i can say let's say let's say approximately approximately by by taking all the assumptions i can say that amount will be 10 raised to the power 10 approximately years i'm not sure about the actual uh, calculation because it's a tedious one you can let me know the answer in the comment box definitely but let's say let's say that will require 10 raised to the power 10 years or let's say 10 raised to the power 9 years whatever it is whatever it is let's say it will require 10 raised to the power 9 years 10 raised to the power 9 years 10 raised to the power 9 years it means if i am writing it it will be 8 2 4 5 6 7 8 9 these many years it will require these many years to spend my entire money if i'm spending 1 crore rupees per second you can see you can see now now you can relate like this amount is actually very very large because in terms of money 
our calculation is actually very accurate we know about the entire part but in terms of these species you cannot relate like you can see like number is very very large but again you can see if i'm spending one crore you can take uh, 10 crore you can take 100 crores even per second then you can see like it will require uh, an enormous amount of time enormous amount of years to actually spend the entire money so that's that's the significance of this particular number which is the avogadro's number and now you can correlate like this number is actually very 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 large and uh, the the interesting thing in that case is you can see that only 12 gram of carbon you can see 12 gram of carbon has these many atoms these many atoms of carbon so you can see like this number is actually very very large i hope this entire part is clear to everyone you can see the calculation it's a very simple analogy i tried to give you the basic perspective about the entire part of mole okay now if this entire part is clear then we need to understand what are the formulas we can use to calculate the mole so always remember this mole is generally represented by small n and you can calculate mole first of all with the help of mass as well as as well as with the help of number okay so there are although there are three methods to calculate uh, number of moles or more than three methods to calculate mole we will definitely discuss about each and every method but yeah uh, first thing is you can uh, correlate mole with mass you can correlate mole with the number of particles number of particles so the question is how can we calculate sir so first formula i am telling you first formula um is basically very easy first formula is a very easy okay so i can say in terms of mass okay in terms of mass so the uh, thing in that case is very easy whenever you are calculating mole you need an information which is already given in the question so just look at the question just read out the question you can find certain informations in the question so the first information you can look for is the given mass given mass okay so if this value is already given then you can divide this entire part with molar mass but the thing is what are the units in that case sir so this given mass will be in grams generally in grams you can see it will be microgram it can be nanogram it can be milligram whatever it is but it should be in grams molar mass is also calculated in terms of gram per mole okay now the basic thing is the formula is n is equal to w by m okay that is the first formula and with the help of this formula you can easily calculate each and everything <clears throat> now the question is sir we can see the given information we can see that mass is given for any type of species but the thing is how can we calculate the molar mass so always remember molar mass of any species molar mass of any species is nothing but the mass of one mole of that species okay now the most interesting thing is sir we know about the atomic mass molecular mass but how can we calculate the molar mass because we don't know anything about this particular part so this calculation is a very very easy always remember you can calculate the atomic mass you can calculate the molecular mass and just try to convert u into grams just try to convert u into grams that's it because molar mass as well as a molecular mass if i'm talking about a molecule uh, molar mass as well as atomic mass if i'm talking about a particular uh, atom they are exactly same but their units are actually different so the thing is how can we say sir they are same so let me tell you a very simple example 
लेट से वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एटॉमिक वेट ऑफ हाइड्रोजन विच इज वन यू विच इज वन यू एंड नाउ यू नो दैट यू कैन कन्वर्ट दिस यू इन टू ग्राम्स सो यू नो दैट विल बी वन मल्टीप्लाइड बाय वन अपॉन सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो टू टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टेन रेस टू पावर ट्वेंटी थ्री ग्राम्स बिकॉज वन यू इज बेसिकली वन अपॉन सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो टू टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टेन रेस टू पावर ट्वेंटी थ्री ग्राम्स विच वी ऑलरेडी कैलकुलेटेड नाउ इन दिस केस यू नो दैट मोलर मास ऑफ हाइड्रोजन इज अ बेसिकली द मास ऑफ 6.022 पॉइंट जीरो टू टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टेन रिस्ट्री पावर ट्वेंटी थ्री एटम्स ऑफ हाइड्रोजन ओके सो वन हाइड्रोजन इज हैविंग दिस मच मास सो दीज मैनी एटम्स विल बी हैविंग मास विल बी इक्वल टू टोटल नंबर ऑफ एटम्स मल्टीप्लाइड बाई द मास ऑफ वन एटम विच इज वन अपॉन सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो टू टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टेन रिस्ट्री पावर ट्वेंटी थ्री ग्राम्स now you can see you can cancel out these two numbers and the final answer will be 1 gram okay so now you can see the atomic weight was 1 u but its molar mass comes out as 1 gram per mole okay so that is the beauty so if you remember all the atomic masses and molecular masses it's very easy for you to calculate the uh, molar mass okay this is the first part if the information is given in terms of mass then you can calculate their moles okay let's try to decode this part in a much more simpler way so let's say let's say i am taking a simple question i am taking a very simple question uh let's say part a what will be the calculate the number of moles of ammonia having 34 kilogram sample let's say i'm taking 34 kilogram ammonia sample how many number of moles are present very easy you can see the information which is given so you know that a number of moles are uh, given weight divided by molar mass now in case of ammonia the formula is nh3 this is ammonia now if i talk about its molar mass nitrogen is having 14 3 multiplied by 1 so we know that will be 17 gram per mole that is the molar mass of ammonia now in this case if you put the value we have 34 kg and on the down side we have 17 grams so first of all units should be converted so i can say that will be 34 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 3 grams divided by 17 so you can solve this final answer will be 2 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 3 moles okay so this is your final answer very easy very simple and this is uh let's say i am talking about another question calculate number of moles present in uh let's say 124 mg solid phosphorus okay again a very interesting question so in that case this is the given weight already given to you but the thing is what is the solid phosphorus so always remember solid phosphorus will be having formula which is p4 <coughs> solid sulfur is having formula s8 now in this case if i talk about the molar mass i know that four um, atoms of phosphorus are there and each is having mass which is 31 so that will be 124 gram per mole because there is no need to convert u into gram each time with the help of this enormous calculation you know whatever you are considering in terms of u that will be equal to uh, grams if i am converting that part into molar mass <coughs> now this part is clear we can say number of moles are basically given weight divided by molar mass given weight is 124 mg this is in mg so that will be multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 grams divided by we have 124 g per 
mole. Now you can solve this entire part. You can see the value will be 10 raised to the power minus 3 moles. I hope this entire part is clear. So with the help of given information, you can convert the entire data into number of moles. And one more thing, one more interesting thing. Let's say I'm talking about another part. Calculate the weight of a sample having, having, let's say, 49 or let's say let's say not 49 you can take uh, 0 0.2 moles of glucose another part another part which is uh, slightly interesting now with the help of moles we need to calculate the weight again the question is asking about the weight so i can say that we have n is equal to w by m okay this part is already given to us molar mass we already know can we calculate this particular part yes it's very easy so we can say from that part that weight will be equal to uh, n multiplied by m so i can say n is already given which is a 0 0.2 multiplied by now molar mass of a glucose always remember the formula is c6 h12 o6 so its molar mass is 180 gram per mole if it is 180 gram per mole i can multiply it with the same part so that will be 180 gram per mole so we know this is basically 0 0.2 mole so 0 0.2 uh, this is 0 this is 36 gram so the sample weight is actually 36 gram so either way you can calculate the entire part of a mole so this is the first formula which correlates given weight or given mass with the help of its molar mass now the second formula is quite interesting second formula is again quite interesting you can correlate mole you can correlate mole with the help of next part so always remember in terms of number of species okay so in terms of number of species also you can correlate moles so the formula is very easy n is equal to number of particles given divided by avogadro's number that is the simplest formula so n will be equal to so this n will be equal to capital n by n a that is the formula n is basically the given particles you just have to look for the uh, values whatever given in the question uh, mole calculation is not very tedious it's not very confusing most of the times we are not able to understand like uh, the actual essence of the question what what the question is saying what are the informations given in the question so i suggest you to read out the question very carefully extract all the informations whatever given in the question and try to solve the question um, in the next manner okay and always whenever you are dealing with the questions of mole the first thing which you should do is calculate number of moles first okay that is the primary thing now uh, in this case in terms of number of species i can simply say that uh, uh, for example for example uh, calculate number of moles of ammonia having having 12.044 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 20 molecules of ammonia okay very interesting question or very simple question so i can say number of moles are basically given number of particles which is 12.044 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 20 divided by avogadro's number so this is basically your n this is your na now you can put the value 12.044 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 20 divided by 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 so you can say that will be two times so we will have the value 2 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 moles i hope this entire part is clear i hope this entire part is clear very simple calculation very easy calculation let's say 
let's take another question uh, calculate number of molecules of ethane in in let's say 2.5 or let's say not 2.5 you can say in 0.5 moles of ethane sample okay very simple question very simple question so you can say that the number of moles are n upon na this data is already known to us this data is given in the question so we can calculate the n so from that part i can say n will be equal to number of moles are 0 0.5 multiplied by na which is 0.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 so i can say that will value will be 3.011 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 molecules of ethane i hope this part is clear now try to make this uh, this particular part more interesting because we are talking about the molecules only it can all also give the data in terms of number of atoms or it can ask us to calculate number of carbon atoms or number of hydrogen atoms which are present in this much amount so for that part always remember you can convert number of molecules into number of atoms if you can multiply the entire part with atomicity so this is the next part what is atomicity what is atomicity atomicity is a very simple thing it basically talks about the number of atoms which are present in one molecule so for example if i talk about uh, hydrogen in that case the atomicity is actually two you can see in one molecule two atoms of hydrogen are present in the case of O2 again, you can see the atomicity is again 2. Very interesting. In the case of let's say P4, the atomicity is actually 4. So basically number of atoms which are present in one molecule. If I talk about uh, let's say uh, solid sulfur, acid, you can see in that case the atomicity is actually Eight. Okay. Now let's say, let's say, if I'm talking about C six H twelve O six, sir, three different atoms are there. So, so what? So I can say the atomicity of carbon is actually six. Atomicity of hydrogen is actually twelve. Atomicity of oxygen is again six. That's the thing. Or I can say, I can say total atomicity is actually equals to uh, this is 24 okay just look at the calculation very carefully just look at the calculation Okay, now my question is very easy. Can you tell me the atomicity in case of C12, H22, O11? The atomicity in case of H2SO4? The atomicity in case of what can, what can we take? Okay, H2O2 atomicity in case of uh, H3PO4 atomicity in case of uh, C4H10 atomicity in case of uh, C2H5 uh, this is C2 
or you can take atomicity in case of CH3COH okay so can you tell me the uh, answers just uh, pause for some time try to analyze each and every part and let me know the answer in comment box okay okay so if you calculate this entire part you can say sir very easy in this case if I talk about the atomicity of carbon I can say it's 12 atomicity of hydrogen it's uh, 22 atomicity of oxygen is basically 11 atomicity total in that case will be uh, 225 and 45 that will be 45 okay done done in this particular case in this particular case you can say atomicity of hydrogen is a 2 uh, atomicity of oxygen is a 4 atomicity of a sulfur is a 1 and atomicity total is actually 246 plus 1 7 okay in this case atomicity of hydrogen is 2 which is atomicity of oxygen is again 2 atomicity total is a 4 okay in this particular case you know atomicity of hydrogen is 3 atomicity of a phosphorus is 1 atomicity of oxygen is 4 atomicity total will be 8 okay same in this case atomicity of carbon as well as atomicity of hydrogen that will be 4 as well as a 10 total will be 14 in this case atomicity of carbon is 1 and 1 2 atomicity of hydrogen is 3 1 4 atomicity of oxygen is actually 2 and atomicity total will be 8 okay and that's how you can calculate the entire part related to atomicity i hope this entire part is clear very very simple uh, analysis related to the atomicity now the question is uh, let's talk about some interesting questions in that case so okay so now the question is saying uh, from the previous part let's say we have the previous part uh, of the question which is related to your uh, glucose or you can take uh, solid phosphorus or you can even take even take ethane in this case <clears throat> the question is saying calculate number of carbon atoms in uh, let's say we have uh, C2 in 30 milligram ethane sample. Now, most of you are going to be very confused, sir. This question number of carbon atoms 30 milligram ethane, what can we do? So, I told you whenever the question is related, you can see the question is related to moles definitely. So, first thing you can do is calculate number of moles number of moles of ethane are basically 30 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 grams given weight divided by 30 gram per mole its molar mass because ethane is c2 at 6 if this is c2 at 6 you know its molar mass is going to be 2 multiplied by 12 plus 6 multiplied by 1 that will be 30 gram per mole so this calculation is clear now from that part you can see number of moles are 10 raised to the power minus 3 number of moles are 10 raised to the power minus 3 now you know another formula that number of moles are basically number of molecules divided by na so you can say from that part that number of ethane molecules are basically 10 raised to the power minus 3 multiplied by na second part now you know another thing that number of carbon atoms in ethane are basically number of molecules multiplied by atomicity of carbon simple thing so you can say we have 10 raised to the power minus 3 and a total number of particles or total number of molecules multiplied by atomicity of carbon in ethane which is 2 so you can say that will be multiplied by 2 so 2 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 and a and that's how you can simply calculate each and everything so you can see 
देर इज अ डायरेक्ट रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द नंबर ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स एज वेल एज वेट ऑफ द गिवन सब्सटेंस एंड दैट्स वाई वी हैव अ कन्वर्जन चार्ट फॉर द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ मोल विच इज वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग so if the information is given in terms of grams you can convert that entire part into number of moles very easily what you can do that a number of moles will be equal to given weight divided by their molar mass which is already given and you can convert back the entire data into mass that will be w is equal to n multiplied by m so these are the two formulas for this conversion now in this conversion you are talking about the number of particles so you can say you can convert uh, number of particles into moles so number of moles are basically number of particles divided by na and you can convert back moles into number of particles which is n is equal to na into small n now these particles can be anything let's say these particles are molecules let's say these particles are molecules so the next question is can you convert these molecules into atoms yes very efficiently i can convert these molecules into atoms because i have this much of molecules i can convert this into atoms so i can say that number of atoms will be equal to number of molecules multiplied by atomicity number of molecules multiplied by atomicity and if i am uh, dividing number of atoms by atomicity i can convert it into number of molecules so vice versa is also possible okay what you have to do you just have to divide number of atoms divided by atomicity that will give you number of molecules and that's how you can convert the entire part so these are the two formulas which you can use for solid liquid as well as gases but there is one specific formula which is only applicable in case of gases only okay that is the third formula and most important one so the first formula again i am saying that n is equal to w by m in terms of mass second formula n is equal to n upon na in terms of particles okay in terms of particles and in terms of mass the third formula is quite interesting which is applicable in case of gases only but first let's try to decode this question so in 3 moles of ethane calculate the following now we can do it this is the equation from ncert so number of moles of carbon atoms it's a very interesting uh, analogy i can say that uh, we have uh, n for ethane which is the c2h6 it's already given that this value is actually 3 so it's asking about the number of moles of carbon atoms so just remember that in one molecule of ethane we know we have two atoms of carbon so i can say in one mole i can say in one mole of ethane we have two moles of carbon very simple thing in if in if in one molecule we have two atoms so in one mole definitely we have two moles of carbon atoms so given information is the three moles so three moles of ethane are having two multiplied by three moles of carbon so that will be equal to 6 moles very simple thing <clears throat> okay so we can say this part is clear we have total 6 moles of carbon atoms okay now number of moles of hydrogen atoms now again the same calculation again the same calculation that in one molecule of ethane we have 6 hydrogen atoms so in one mole of ethane you will be having 6 mole hydrogen atoms so in 3 moles of ethane it will be 6 multiplied by 3 mole of hydrogen atoms that will be 18 moles 
very simple calculation very simple calculation now number of molecules of ethane now this part is a very very easy again so we can say this is the first part this is the second part and third part so now i can use the formula n is equal to capital n upon na this value is known to us this value is already given so we can say that n will be equal to 3 multiplied by na so which is 3 na you can solve this particular part 3 multiplied by 6.022 multiplied by 10 to the power 23 so it will be i guess 18.066 18.066 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 molecules. I hope the entire part is clear to everyone. I hope the entire part is clear. Okay. Now, talking about the next part. Next part is again related to the volume of gases. So, first of all, we have to understand the term which is molar volume. So, this molar volume is generally defined for the gases part. And again, uh, if I talk about the volume, so there are certain factors for gases. Always remember, whenever we talk about gases, there are certain properties which are very relevant. We need to know about the pressure. We need to know about the volume. We need to know about the temperature. And one more part, which is basically N. That is the number of moles. So these are the quantities which are always associated with a particular gas. In thermodynamics, you are going to learn about certain thermodynamic variables. Uh, mainly, we are talking about pressure, volume as well as temperature. And if I am talking about the number of uh, moles, that is also going to change. So, these are the variable parts. So, they are going to always change. So, whenever I am talking about the molar volume, I need to understand that I have to make sure that these variables are not the variables. I have to make sure if I am talking about this volume part, which is related to the one mole. So, this is already constant. I am talking about the molar volume. It means one mole. Molar volume means one mole. So, this part is already constant. I am calculating this particular part. I need to make sure that pressure and temperature are basically constant because everything related to gases, they are actually variables. They are actually variables. Okay. Uh, this will be much more clear when we are talking about the uh, thermodynamics. But don't worry. I am just saying that in case of gases, you need to make sure that these quantities are included because these are the variable part. Okay, I am calculating molar volume. It means N is already 1. I am calculating the volume. It means I have to make sure that pressure and temperature are constant. And that's why we have a specific condition which is known as STP. That is standard temperature and pressure. Now, you know, there are different variations related to STP. But the actual meaning of STP, which is standard temperature pressure is, I am talking about a standard temperature as well as standard pressure. So, temperature is basically 0 degree Celsius and a temperature, uh, sorry, pressure is 1 atm. Earlier, it was uh, decided as uh, uh, your 273 Kelvin temperature, but 1 bar pressure. That's why you can see there is a slight variation in the calculation. Uh, I'll let you know in the gaseous state also how you can say one part is 22.4 liter and one part is 22.7 liter approximately. Okay, so don't worry. Those who already know, they know what I'm saying. But those who don't know, don't worry, we are going to discuss that part in the states of matter. Okay, so basically STP means a very simple condition which is uh, 0 degree Celsius, that is 273.15 Kelvin and 1 atm pressure. Now the pressure is fixed, temperature is, is fixed. I am talking about 1 mole calculation, it means I can simply calculate the volume and that's how you can calculate everything. Okay, now the molar volume of gas is the basically volume of a 1 mole of gas at STP. This is the most important thing. This is the most important thing. What is the molar volume? It is basically the volume of one mole of gas at STP. Because at STP, pressure and temperature are already constant. One mole is already there. So, I can simply calculate this volume V. And there is one simple calculation which is, uh, sorry. There is one simple formula which is PV is equal to NRT. Don't worry, I am not going to talk about this particular formula, but with the help of this formula, you can calculate molar volume very, very easily. Okay, you can put the values in this uh, equation. R is basically your universal gas constant and you know you have the answer, which is 22.4. But again, uh, for simplicity, what we can do, we can just, for now, for now, we can just remember this particular part that every type of gas, irrespective of its nature, 
एवरी टाइप ऑफ गैस वन मोल ऑफ गैस एट एस टी पी ओके वन मोल मीन्स दिस मच पार्टिकल्स ऑफ गैस वॉट एवर इट इज सो वन मोल ऑफ गैस एट एस टी पी ऑलवेज ऑक्यूपाइज अ स्पेसिफिक वॉल्यूम विच इज ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फोर लीटर आई होप दिस एंटायर पार्ट इज क्लियर टू एवरी वन सो वी कैन एक्चुअली कोरिलेट एनदर फॉर्मूला एन फॉर गैसेज एन फॉर गैसेज दैट विल बी इक्वल टू वॉल्यूम ऑफ गैस एट एस टी पी दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कंडीशन एंड इट शुड बी इन लीटर्स डिवाइडेड बाय ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट फोर लीटर्स सो दिस फॉर्मूला इज मच मोर लुक लाइक द नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स फॉर्मूला नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स डिवाइडेड बाय एन ए एन इज ऑलरेडी कॉन्स्टेंट सो दिस इज द कॉन्स्टेंट पार्ट बेसिकली दिस इज द मोलर वॉल्यूम मोलर वॉल्यूम एट एस टी पी and this is again in liters okay i hope this entire part is clear so now we have a three formulas related to moles first one is basically your uh, formula related to mass second one formula related to uh, number of particles and third part related to only volume of gases that is the volume of gas at stp in liters divided by 22.4 liters okay now this basically this was the representation it was the animation but uh, now i have the pdf so that's why this animation is not working uh, in this animation i was trying to show you like that that at different temperature let's say 10 degree celsius n2 has a different volume in case of uh, 30 degree celsius oxygen has a different volume at uh, uh, minus 30 degree celsius hydrogen has a different volume at 40 degree celsius uh, your cl2 has different volume at 20 degree celsius helium has different volume but if i'm talking about stp condition so at stp whatever the nature of gas i can say at stp means pressure is 1 atm and your temperature is 0 degree celsius at this condition uh, number of moles are basically 1 so i can say molar volume like the volume of hydrogen will become equals to volume of oxygen will become volume of cl2 will become equals to volume of helium will becomes equal to the nitrogen oxygen h2 nitrogen oxygen h2 so volume of nitrogen which is equal to 22.4 liters so that will be the final demonstration so at 0 degree celsius at uh, 1 atm pressure you can see every volume will remain same so you can see whatever the nature of gas either hydrogen gas oxygen gas chlorine whatever gas it is at stp and uh, if i talk about the molar volume their molar volume will always be a constant term which is 22.4 liters i hope this entire part up to that part everything is clear to everyone okay now talking about the next part so you can say in terms of volume of gas number of moles of gas are basically equals to volume of gas in liters at stp divided by 22.4 liters so that is the final formula which i already told you now you can solve all those questions which are present in your ncert as well as ncert exemplar okay now talking about okay okay now we have a very interesting question that a 12.6 gram sample of na2 uh, so3 is mixed with 30 gram sample of mg so4 what is uh, total mass of oxygen present in the mixture so how can we calculate this entire part very easily very easily okay so first part we are talking about the total mass of oxygen present in the mixture it may sound confusing but i told you first of all you have to calculate number of moles okay so first of all we have na2 so3 sample can i calculate the molar mass of na2 so3 yes very easily we have two sodium having mass 23 plus one sulfur having mass 32 then we have three oxygens having mass 16 so that will be 46 plus 32 plus 48 so 48 50 80 80 uh, 126 so that will be 126 gram per mole can i calculate the number of moles of na2 so3 can i calculate the number of moles of na2 so3 yes very easily i can say given weight which is 12.6 gram 
divided by its molar mass which is 126 so i can say that will be i guess 0 0.1 mole so we have the first calculation related to the number of moles of uh, um, your na2so3 now from that particular part can i calculate number of moles of oxygen in na2so3 sample yes in one mole you can see three moles of oxygen are present so in this many mole so 0 0.1 mole you have three times which is 0 0.3 0 0.3 moles of oxygen this is the most important part because you know that one molecule of Na2SO3 contains three atoms of oxygen it means i can say that one mole of na2so3 will contain three moles of oxygen so 0 0.1 mole of na2so3 will contain 0 0.3 moles of oxygen done done next part next part uh, now we have next species which is mg so4 so in this case we have magnesium 24 plus sulfur 32 plus 4 oxygen which is 16 so we have 24 plus 32 plus uh, 64 so char uh, 4 4 8 to 10 and we have a 0 here 6 9 11 120 so that is 120 gram per mole okay can i calculate the number of moles of mgso4 yes very easily very easily so in this case i have uh, given weight which is 30 divided by 120 so that will be 1 by 4 gram sorry 1 by 4 moles okay so total moles of mgso4 are 1 by 4 now you know that one molecule of mgso4 will contain four atoms of oxygen it means one mole of mgso4 will contain four moles of oxygen so i can say that is 0 0.1 mole sorry 1 by 4 <laughs> sorry uh, 1 by 4 mole of mgso4 will contain 1 by 4 multiplied by 4 moles of oxygen so if you solve this you will get the value as one mole oxygen that's it now you know we have one mole oxygen on this side and 0 0.3 moles oxygen on this side so i can say total moles of oxygen are basically 1 plus 0 0.3 which is 1.3 can i calculate the mass yes very efficiently so basically it's talking about the total mass of oxygen present in the mixture so that will be 1.3 multiplied by 16 you just have to solve this entire part there is another method there is another method unitary method by that you can also calculate this entire part for example i can say let's try to decode this question in second method i know that molar mass of na2so3 is actually 126 gram per mole which is the molar mass already given okay 126 gram per mole now i know that 126 gram na2so3 actually contains 48 gram of oxygen okay it means 1 gram of na2so3 will contain 48 divided by 126 gram of oxygen now the given sample is 12.6 gram so 12.6 gram na2so3 will contain 48 divided by 126 multiplied by 12.6 so that will be 4.8 grams first part in the same way you can say that 120 gram of MgSO4 actually contains 64 gram of oxygen it means 1 gram of MgSO4 will contain 64 divided by 120 gram of oxygen 
इट मीन्स थर्टी ग्राम ऑफ एम जी एस ओ फोर विल कंटेन सिक्सटी फोर डिवाइडेड बाय वन ट्वेंटी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय थर्टी ग्राम ऑफ ऑक्सीजन सो इफ यू सॉल्व दिस दिस विल बी फोर दिस विल बी सिक्सटीन आई गेस सो दैट विल बी सिक्सटीन ग्राम ऑफ ऑक्सीजन नाउ टोटल ऑक्सीजन दैट विल बी फोर पॉइंट एट प्लस सिक्सटीन दैट विल बी ट्वेंटी पॉइंट एट ग्राम सो यू कैन सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन बाय एनी ऑफ द मेथड आई टोल्ड यू बोथ दी मैथड्स वॉट एवर लाइक विल बी इजी फॉर यू just try that method and try to solve these type of questions okay so a very interesting as well as very simple question okay just have a look at it okay now talking about the next part there is also one relation although uh, we are going to discuss all the um, laws in one segment but there is one one uh, very simple relationship with volume as well as number of moles which simply says i already told you that we have certain variables pressure temperature volume as well as number of moles let's say i'm i'm taking these two as constant let's say i'm taking these two as constant it means i can correlate volume with number of moles so that's why we have a specific rule which is known as avogadro's law so what it says it simply states that equal volume of all gases at same condition of a temperature and pressure always contains same number of molecules or same number of moles okay so always remember that temperature and pressure should remain constant they should remain constant and at this condition you can say that a volume is directly proportional to number of molecules of the gas or you can say that this v is directly proportional to number of moles okay very interesting very interesting rule that's why at stp you can see at stp whatever gas gas i am taking uh one mole of gas always has the same volume which is 22.4 liter that is the significance of this particular law which is avogadro's law okay so uh, if i talk about the equation i can say that v is a directly proportional to n or i can say if i am removing the proportionality i can use a constant which is k proportionality constant so v will be equal to k multiplied by n at constant temperature and pressure primary condition this is the primary condition okay now always remember i can vary the temperature and pressure but again if i am considering that particular part i need to make sure that i am taking certain things as a constant so let's say i am i'm not talking about stp condition i can take any other condition let's say the temperature is 300 kelvin and the pressure is uh, 2 atm let's say but in that condition also i am considering all the gases again in that case you can see the variation is going to remain as it is okay for example a simple demonstration is given here so let's say the temperature uh, pressure is 180 atm temperature let's say i am taking as 0 degree celsius let's say temperature is a fixed in this particular case we know the equation that v is actually equals to uh, k multiplied by n so i can say that v1 will be equal to k multiplied by n1 v2 will be equal to k multiplied by n2 so i can say that v1 upon v2 will be equal to n1 upon n2 so that is the most important thing you can calculate with the help of same equation now let's say in one condition in one condition n is actually 1 but the volume actually comes out as 22.4 liters let's say in in next condition at same temperature and pressure i'm taking two moles of gas but the volume actually comes out as 44.8 can i correlate this particular ratio yes very easily so we have 22.4 divided by 44.8 will be equal to n1 is actually 1 n2 is actually 2 so 1 by 2 so if you solve this you can say it is again equals to 1 by 2 so rhs equals to rhs i hope this entire part is clear to everyone a very simple um, analysis of the same rule now talking about the next part Uh, okay let's say we have a question 
क्वेश्चन से कैलकुलेट दी मोलर मास ऑफ ऑक्सीजन गैस इफ 64 ग्राम ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इन 22.4 लीटर वेसल एक्सर्ट्स अ प्रेशर ऑफ अ टू एटीएम एट अ जीरो डिग्री सेल्सियस अगेन अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन नॉट फ्रॉम दी सेम पार्ट बट यू कैन को रिलेट दी एंटायर आइडिएशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट दी मोलर मास ऑफ ऑक्सीजन यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट दी मोलर मास ऑफ द ऑक्सीजन बट इन दैट केस वन थिंग इज मिसिंग everything is missing basically so you know that uh, w of the sample is basically 64 grams first part it is given in the question you know that the volume is also given which is 22.4 liters not at stp definitely in that case we have what can we do we can say that uh, pressure in this case is a uh, 2 atm टेम्परेचर इन दिस केस इज जीरो डिग्री सेल्सियस और आई कैन से टू सेवेंटी थ्री कैलविन ओके सो दिस इज द डेटा गिवन टू अस नाउ वी नो दैट वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट द मोलर मास देर इज ओनली वन फॉर्मुला दैट नंबर ऑफ मोल्स इज इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू बाई एम इफ आई वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट द मोलर मास दैट विल बी डब्ल्यू बाय एन नाउ इन दिस क्वेश्चन दिस पर्टिकुलर पार्ट इज गिवेन but we have to calculate this next part okay and that's how you can reach to the actual answer you you have to calculate the molar mass so for that you need number of moles number of moles are not given but the weight is actually given so you have to calculate this particular part which is your number of moles how can you calculate i told you of one simple equation which is a pv is equal to nrt okay pv is equal to nrt so from that part i can say this is the ideal gas equation okay so don't worry if you are not able to correlate with this particular part trust me we are going to discuss the entire part elaborately in uh, your uh, gaseous state chapter which is states of matter okay now in this particular case you can see we have the value of a pressure which is 2 atm multiplied by volume which is 22.4 liters that will be equal to number of moles of gas which is missing now in this case r is basically universal gas constant okay this particular part is universal gas constant it has some specific values now in terms of uh, liter atm that value is 0.082 approximately although the unit is joule per kelvin per mole that unit is entirely different that is 8.314 8.314 joule per kelvin per mole in this case it is a liter atm per kelvin per mole uh, in terms of calorie also you can take calorie per kelvin per mole which will be 2 okay so it has three specific values already known to us okay now the thing is we can put the value which is a 0.082 multiplied by 273 because temperature is also known so you can say from that particular part n will be equal to 2 multiplied by 22.4 divided by 0.082 multiplied by 273 now you have number of moles you have given weight can you calculate uh, molar mass in this particular case yes it's very easy so we can say that molar mass will be equal to given weight which is 64 g already given to us divided by number of moles which is 2 multiplied by 22.4 multiplied by 0.082 multiplied by 273 so you just have to solve this entire part and let me know the final answer in this case the only thing which is extra additive in this question is basically your equation pv is equal to nrt and you can see that we are using the equation for gases only okay so that's the beauty of this particular question i hope the entire part is clear just let me know the answer in comment box okay now talking about the next part next part is again very interesting because uh, i told you if if you remember that we have uh, chlorine having mass which is equals to 35.5 and you must be wondering why it is 35.5 when we are taking sodium as 23 oxygen as 16 carbon as 12 nitrogen as 14 why it is uh, 35.5 so here is the reason basically we are talking about the next term which is average atomic mass because in calculation of mole these things are actually going to be required okay so first of all the average atomic mass can be defined if i am talking about the average 
it's it's very simple but in this case i am more interested in another term which is known as which is known as average isotopic mass so there is another term which is known as average isotopic mass because we are going to talk about the isotopes only so remember the average atomic mass is nothing but the average of the mass of all the isotopes of an element in the given sample with respect to the same reference which is relative to the 1 12th of the mass of 1 carbon 12 atom so again the reference is same but in this case i am talking about the average of the mass of isotopes there might be a chance that a particular element has different isotopes and in the native state these isotopes are present in different relative abundance one may be high one may be low but they are present so you can you can extract that particular element and there might be a chance that both the isotopes are present so you have to calculate the average of that mass and that part is actually known as average atomic mass okay so what's the formula of average atomic mass it's very easy that it is equal to the mass of each isotope multiplied by its percentage abundance and the summation of entire part whatever isotopes i'm considering that is the summation part okay so just remember this important formula okay now the thing is how can we calculate sir like uh, how you are saying that the mass of chlorine is 35.5 so let's find out if i talk about the calculation related to chlorine let's say let's say we have chlorine 35 isotopes as well as chlorine 37 isotopes okay okay i have one question related to this particular part we are going to solve that particular question so just like the average atomic mass we have average molecular mass again this particular part is going to be used if an particular atom is present in the isotopic form okay if it is present in the isotopic form let's say hcl 35 hcl 37 okay so this is the chance so in that case the average molecular mass is the sum of average atomic masses of all the atoms in a molecule just like the same definition but this definition will be much more clear if we are going to solve certain questions okay so let's talk about the question one so the first question is related to the in a molecule of z2o element z exists in the isotopic form of z20 and z22 with percentage abundance of 80 percent 20 percent respectively calculate the average molecular mass of z2o now before solving the molecular mass of z2o let me tell you what will be the average atomic mass of z because we know that this z is actually uh, in two forms first part is a z20 and next part is a z20 yes i guess yeah now first case percentage abundance is 80 percent and in this case it is 20 percent can we calculate the average atomic mass of z yes very easily the mass of first isotope which is 20 multiplied by its percentage abundance okay next part mass of another isotope multiplied by its percentage abundance yes yes so we can say from that particular part 0000, 0, 0, 0 this is 8 to the 16 plus 0, 0 uh, this is 4.4 .4. so now you know this will be 20.4 u okay so the average atomic mass of z is actually 20.4 if that is the actual case can we say that average molecular mass of z2o will be its average mass 20.4 multiplied by 2 plus mass of oxygen which is 16 just like that whatever calculation we are doing for z2o so mass of z which is 22 point 20.4 uh, multiplied by 2 because we have two species and plus mass of oxygen which is 16 so in that case you can see that will be 40.8 plus 16 so that will be 56.8 u so that will be the final answer 56.8 u answer d i hope this this particular part is clear to you the calculation of average atomic as well as average molecular mass is clear to everyone very simple very very easy thing now can we solve this entire part for chlorine can we solve this entire part for chlorine okay let's try to decode this particular part so in case of a chlorine we have isotope which is 35 then chlorine we have a 37 its percentage abundance let's say it is 75 percent it's 25 percent okay percentage abundance is given 
their uh, isotopic mass is given so i can say that average atomic mass for chlorine will be equal to mass of first isotope which is 35 multiplied by its percentage abundance plus mass of another isotope which is 37 multiplied by its percentage abundance which is 25 divided by 100 okay so if you solve this you will get the value as 35.5 u and that's why you can see we have 35.5 uh, u uh, as the mass of chlorine because both the isotopes are present predominantly okay so that's the entire analysis about your chlorine part and that's why hydrogen has the mass 1.0008 because it has three isotopes uh, protium deuterium as well as tritium although the percentage abundance of protium is actually very high that's why the mass is always closer to one okay i hope this entire part is clear to everyone very simple analysis now the next part basically we have three components first one is the percentage composition next part is the empirical formula and last part is the molecular formula and these three things are actually correlated with each other percentage composition molecular formula as well as empirical formula they are they are correlated with each other because uh, for the calculation of empirical as well as molecular formula we need to understand what is the percentage composition already given so percentage comp composition is a very easy and very uh, simple mathematical term i can say uh, let's say you have total five pencils so what is the um, uh, you have let's say five pencils five rubbers so what's the percentage of uh, pens which are present in your total sample so you can say five pencils total amount is uh, 10 so 5 by 10 multiplied by 100 50 percent is there so let's say you have uh, two pens uh, three pencils uh, then and five erasers so what is the percentage of pen you can say sir total pens are two and total uh, components are 10 so two divided by 10 multiplied by 100 and that's how you can solve these type of equations very easily that's the same meaning of percentage composition but in this case i am talking about not the terms uh, like number of pens number of pencils in this case i am talking about the mass of that particular atom so the mass percentage of each constituent element in the particular compound is basically known as its percentage composition and formula is very easy formula is very easy that the mass percentage of any component is basically the mass of element in one molecule of the compound divided by the total mass of the compound multiplied by 100 as simple as that okay can we solve certain questions yes very easily okay okay so this question is already given but before that let's try to analyze certain questions related to this percentage composition uh, let's say let's say i'm saying calculate percentage composition in co2 let's say let's say very simple thing percentage composition in co2 so the percentage of carbon will be so first of all the molar mass of a co2 will be 12 for carbon 2 multiplied by 16 for oxygen that will be 44 u i can take u i can take gram whatever it is don't worry so carbon is present uh, 12 u divided by total is 44 multiplied by 100 that is the percentage of carbon what is the percentage of oxygen uh, total is 32 divided by 44 multiplied by 100 and that's how you can calculate uh, let's say i want to calculate the percentage composition of ammonia so the molar mass of ammonia is 14 for nitrogen and 3 for hydrogen that will be 17 gram let's say okay so this is again u, u grams gram per mole because i'm talking about the molar mass gram per mole okay so the percentage of nitrogen will be 14 divided by 17 multiplied by 100 and percentage of hydrogen will be 3 divided by 17 multiplied by 100 as simple as that okay and that's how you can deal with the entire calculation part I hope this portion is clear to everyone. 
not talking about the question uh, just read out the question carefully a certain newly synthesized compound is known to contain the elements zinc and oxygen okay 120 gram of sample uh, in the compound is decomposed 16.07 gram of zinc remains uh, the percentage composition of oxygen is so we know that uh, total amount is basically 20 gram and it has only two components zinc and oxygen amount of zinc is basically 16.07 gram i guess so i can say the amount of oxygen will be 20 minus 16.07 <clears throat> that will be 3.93 gram i guess now it's very easy you know that percentage composition of oxygen will be amount of oxygen in the sample divided by the total amount multiplied by 100 so that will be five times so uh, approximately closer to 20 that will be 19.65 okay that's the final answer i hope this entire part is clear very simple question very simple analysis and these are the questions related to uh, your percentage composition part okay now the next thing which is definitely the empirical formula or i can say the molecular formula that part also we are going to discuss but there is one more question a sample containing only cseo3 and mgco3 is ignited to co as well as mgo this is my favorite question and uh, because in this question you have to actually um, um, understand certain things to actually correlate the formula because no information is given in this particular question only thing is a sample containing only CaCO3 MgCO3 is ignited to CaO and MgO the mixture of oxide produced weight exactly half as much as the original sample calculate the mass percentage of a CaCO3 and MgCO3 in the sample okay so first of all I am giving this question as your homework but uh, to help you with this particular question, I can give you a hint. Okay, let's say the mass of mixture mixture is hundred grams. Okay, so in that case, that uh, W of CaCO3 is uh, let's say X. So W of MgCO3, W of Mg. CO3 will be 100 minus X because total mass is 100 gram. Okay, and two components are there. Now, first part is Ca CO3 is converting into CaO and Mg CO3 is converting into MgO. Okay, that's the beauty of this particular question. You know that uh, 100 grams of CaCO3 when decomposed it actually forms because the molar mass of this particular part CaCO3 is 100 gram you can you can calculate if you are not fluent you can calculate this part by your own molar mass of CaCO3 will be calcium 40 plus uh, carbon 12 plus 3 multiplied by 16 which is 48 so that will be 100 gram per mole in the same way uh, molar mass of a cao will be uh, you can say that we have 40 plus 16 which is 56 gram per mole first part so i can say that 100 gram of a cao3 will actually form 56 gram of a cao it means 1 gram of a CaCO3 will form 56 by 100 gram of a CaO. Okay, next part X gram because that's the amount of sample I have taken. X gram of a CaCO3 will actually form 56 by 100 X gram of CaO. This is the first part. You can do the same part for MgCO3. Molar mass of MgCO3 is actually 24 plus 12 plus 48 okay so 48 50 60 60 84 that will be 84 that will be 84 gram per mole 
मोलर मास ऑफ एम जी ओ विल बी ट्वेंटी फोर प्लस सिक्सटीन विच इज फोर्टी ग्राम पर मोल ओके सो आई हैव गिवन यू मोस्ट ऑफ द हिंट अगेन यू कैन सी दैट एटी फोर ग्राम ऑफ एम जी सी ओ थ्री विल फॉर्म फोर्टी ग्राम ऑफ एम जी ओ सो वन ग्राम ऑफ एम जी सी ओ थ्री विल फॉर्म फोर्टी डिवाइड बाई एटी फोर ग्राम ऑफ एम जी ओ हंड्रेड माइनस एक्स ग्राम ऑफ एम जी सी ओ थ्री विल कंटेन फोर्टी डिवाइड बाई एटी फोर मल्टीप्लाइड बाई हंड्रेड माइनस एक्स ग्राम ऑफ एम जी ओ नाउ यू नो दिस एंटायर वेट विच इज फॉर्म फर्स्ट पार्ट इज फिफ्टी सिक्स एक्स अपॉन हंड्रेड नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज फोर्टी डिवाइडेड बाई एटी फोर हंड्रेड माइनस एक्स दैट विल बी इक्वल टू हाफ ऑफ दिस एंटायर वेट सो नाउ यू नो दिंट दिस इज दिंट आई हैव गिवन यू इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन जस्ट लेट मी नो इन दमेंट बॉक्स डेफिनेटली वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दिस क्वेश्चन मोर इलेबरेटली ओके अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन ओके नाउ द नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज एम्पेरिकल फॉर्मुला because we know about the uh, average atomic mass calculation we know about the uh, percentage composition now it's time to discuss about two important terms first one is empirical formula and next one is molecular formula so uh, whenever we talk about any type of uh, formula you know we have different molecules they have different type of uh, formulas water h2o uh, ethene c2h6 uh, we have uh, ethene c2h4 uh, ethyne c2h2 methane ch4 hydrogen peroxide h2o2 benzene c6h6 they have different type of formulas but the empirical formula actually talks about the uh, formula which is derived after the minimum ratio between each type of atom so i can say the formula of a particular compound which actually gives the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms of various elements present in one molecule of that particular compound very interesting very interesting thing so basically empirical formula is not the actual formula of the compound but it talks about the minimum simplest ratio between the atoms in one molecule that's it okay so the chemical formula for a compound obtained by the composition analysis that is the most important thing because now we are going to start the composition analysis and after that calculation whatever formula comes which is known as the empirical formula for example for example how can we say we are talking about the empirical formula we know in case of benzene the formula is actually c6h6 but the minimum ratio of carbon and hydrogen the simplest whole number ratio is only 1 is to 1 so we have the empirical formula which is ch i hope this part is clear in case of acetylene which is ethyne the formula is c2h2 again you can see this is the actual formula but the minimum ratio in that case is again 2 divided by 2 which is 1 is to 1 so that will be ch only in case of glucose that is c6 h12 o6 you know it is not the simplest whole number ratio simplest whole number ratio will be 6 divided by 12 divided by 6 so which is 1 is to 2 is to 1 so we have the formula which is ch2 o last part in case of water we know the formula is h2 o the minimum ratio is again 2 is to 1 so that is again same so there might be a chance that the empirical formula is actual to the original formula molecular formula there might be a chance it is actually different for example if i talk about ammonia ammonia in this case its empirical formula is same which is nh3 let's say if i talk about hydrogen peroxide having the formula h2o2 in that case its empirical formula will be minimum ratio which is 1 is to 1 that will be ho okay that is the formula so that's the difference between the actual formula as well as empirical formula but the question is how can we calculate this particular part so uh, these questions are very easy they are very straight forward uh whenever we are dealing with the calculation of empirical formula you need to understand three important steps first one the information which is given in the question either the mass percentage of uh, the element is given or given weight is also given okay so these are the two informations which are already given either the mass percentage or given weight this is already given in the question you have to search for the data next part you have to calculate the number of moles how can you do it 
you can say that number of moles are basically either given weight divided by its molar mass or you can say number of moles are percentage mass percentage divided by the molar mass okay so these are the two formulas you are going to use either the simple uh, formula which is given weight divided by the molar mass if given weight is there if given weight is not there and only mass percentage is there so mass percentage divided by the molar mass you can calculate the number of moles there might be a chance they are coming in the fraction so you have to calculate the simplest ratio of the moles okay what you have to do divide the given moles whatever given in the question with the lowest mole value whatever you have calculated you have to divide the entire part with the lowest value and it will give you the simplest ratio if the simplest ratio is a fine and there is no need if it is not given then calculate or convert simplest ratio into simplest whole number ratio by multiplying with such a number that every value will be a whole number okay that's the entire part related to the calculation and i always suggest to make a table like this so that your calculation becomes very very easy so uh, in the question you can find whatever elements are present you can find their percentage composition this information is always given to you this information is already known to us okay so these are the three things which are already known to us first part elements are given their mass percentage is given and molar mass you already know the next thing what you have to do you have to calculate the number of moles how can you calculate the number of moles it's very easy the calculation i told you that number of moles are basically equal to their mass percentage divided by their molar mass so what you have to do in this case percentage is given 40 divided by the molar mass which is 12 you will get the value 3.33 this where percentage is given 6.67 mass is 1 the percentage is 6.67 next part is 53.3 divided by 16 you will get the value 3.33 again now the simplest mole ratio simplest mole ratio i told you whatever moles you have calculated divide by the minimum value okay minimum value you have to divide this with minimum value so among these three the minimum value is 3.33 only so you will get after dividing it is one it is two it is one now it is already in the whole number ratio so you can say the final value is 1 2 and 1 if it is 1 2 and 1 you can say that empirical formula will be c1 h2o1 now from that part can you calculate the empirical formula mass yes it's very easy we can say that will be 12 for carbon 2 for hydrogen and 16 for uh, oxygen so 16 uh, plus 420 that will be 30 u i hope this entire part is clear this is the calculation related to empirical formula okay just look at it uh, carefully this is the entire part okay now uh, we can discuss further more about this particular concept we can discuss more but uh, let's try to uh, end this particular session with the help of a very interesting question again this question is for your homework okay what the question is saying that vitamin c contains 40.92 percentage carbon uh, 4.58 percentage hydrogen and 54.50 percentage oxygen by mass uh, just forget this value i am just um, uh, changing the question little bit so you have the information i am saying just determine empirical formula of compound okay one additional part just uh, remove this part because this particular part is related to molecular mass i'm not saying that we have to calculate the molecular formula till now 
I'm just saying with the help of this information only, you have to determine the empirical formula. Uh, first part and the second part is empirical formula mass of the compound. Okay, that's all. So I'm ending the session here with a very positive note that we have discussed about the percentage composition as well as the calculation of your empirical formula. Okay, I hope everyone enjoyed this session, learned something new from this session. Remaining part definitely we are going to discuss in the next session. So I I thought we can we can uh, discuss the laws of chemical combination, but that part we are going to discuss in the next session. Don't worry. And we will start with the molecular formula as well as empirical formula calculation. Okay. Uh, whatever your doubts are, just let me know in the comment box. We will discuss that particular part in the next session. Okay. So I hope everyone enjoyed this session and. Uh, just try to practice certain questions by yourself. Just look at the NCRT, read out the NCRT and try to solve as many questions as possible. Okay. So that's all from my side. Thank you so much.